Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Watch. Good morning to you. We're glad that you're here today. And we're going to start off with June just talking a little bit about the theme that we've been holding over the last number of uh, weeks and where we're going today. Okay, thanks, Bill. Uh, we've been focusing on the verse that's found in John chapter 14, verse 6, where Jesus said to Thomas, I am the way and the truth and the life. No man comes to the Father or no woman comes to the Father except through me. So last week we talked about Jesus is the way to the Father, the way to heaven, and the week before that, that Jesus is the truth. He, everything he says and everything he said and it's recorded in the Bible is true. Today we want to focus on Jesus as the life and we're going to read about him as the resurrection and the life and he rose again. He has eternal life and he can give us eternal life if we believe in him. So I'm going to read this today or this morning from the account in John 11 of Lazarus. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who was coming into the world. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And Jesus, deeply moved, again came to the tomb. And Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there'll be an odor, for he has been dead four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this on account of the people standing around, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. What a wonderful, true story. And can you imagine if, he hadn't, if Jesus hadn't said, Lazarus, come out, and just said, come out, how many dead people would have come? <laughs> yes, because there's power in the voice in Jesus' the, words. That's right. Yeah. Let's just pause for a word of prayer. Father, we just thank you that there is power in the name of Jesus. And Jesus, when you spoke, things happened because you had all authority and you had all power, and you do today as well. And so, Father, we just worship you today. Would you lead us as we... A worship together. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Our hymn today that we're going to start with is an old favorite. In Revelations 1.18 it says, I am the living one. I was dead and behold, I am alive forever and ever. Join us as we sing. He lives.
Rejoice, rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King, the hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. Your honor is so loving, so good and kind. In as it is, Christ Jesus is today. He walks with me and talks with me. all right as long as you had breath to come back with with the next note <laughs> okay phil's going to sing a solo it's entitled oh how he loves you and me talking about the love of jesus for us john chapter 15 verse 13 says greater love has no man than this that someone lay down his life for his friends and in first john 4 9 we read these words in this the love of god was made manifest among us that God sent his only son, Jesus, into the world so that we might live through him. Oh, how he loves you and me. Isn't it wonderful that he loves us so much? The three songs that we're going to be singing, singing today, first one we've already done is He Lives. The third one that we're going to do later is Because He Lives. But this one is a real short one, but it is I Live. And I live, and you live, because he lives. Because 
good, and there were a few high notes there for me. <laughs> and uh, I sang some that I didn't intend to, but... <laughs> That's okay. There are so many notes to choose from, and I just love to try them all. <laughs> June, what's our devotional today? Our devotional today, obviously, is about life and eternal life. John seventeen three. This is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. Knowing God through experience is radically different from knowing about God from a theology textbook. According to the Bible, you cannot say you know God unless you have experienced him. Biblical knowledge always involves experience. You may become discouraged because the truths you read about in the Bible are much richer than the reality of your own experience. If you have not experienced God's power at work in and through your life, don't settle for a second-hand knowledge of God's power, rejoicing in what he has done in others. Jesus' prayer was that we would come to know God and his presence in our lives and in our experience. Don't discount the power of God as described in Scripture simply because you have not experienced it. Bring your experience up to the standard of Scripture. Never reduce Scripture to the level of your experience. We don't want to settle for a head knowledge of God's love. Jesus prayed that we would experience the depth and width and height of his love and that we would enjoy God's full and unending love in the day-to-day -day experiences of our lives. If you sense there are biblical truths that you are not experiencing, keep that truth before you and ask God to bring it into your everyday experience. Ask God if there are any adjustments you need to make in order to receive his promise. Don't give up on the promises of God. Stay with them until you are fully experiencing them. And as I read that to you, I also read it to my own heart because we want to know God, to know him in the fullness of who he is and in the life that Jesus promised, life and that more abundant for us as Christians. God bless you. And it's wonderful for all the promises that are in God's word. Yes. They're there for us to claim for ourselves. Right. We're going to uh, sing the last hymn now, and it's entitled, Because He Lives. And we know that many of our dear friends at Champlain Manor watch the Morning Watch program. And uh, just last week, our dear friend, Dorothy Lee, who was such a bright light at Champlain Manor, she hadn't been there very long, but she helped with the worship service and visiting people, reading to someone who didn't have sight. And she went home to be with her Lord and Savior last week on August the 17th. And so we want to dedicate this uh, song in memory of our dear sister in the Lord and friend Dorothy Lee. And it's entitled Because He Lives. And she has met Jesus face to face. And she is more alive today than she ever was while she was here with us. So we hope that you will join us as we sing because he lives.
sweeter still the calm assurance this child can face uncertain days because he lives because he lives I can face Well, Junior, popped that one in for me to sing a long time ago when I used to sing that song. But as an old grandpa, <laughs> I remember first Christmas, uh, we sat right in the next room here, and everybody sat down to Christmas dinner, and I said, just give me a few minutes, and I held our granddaughter. And uh, while they were eating, they looked over to me, and they said, hey, they're both asleep. <laughs> and I wasn't sleeping. I had my eyes closed and I had that privilege to pray for that little girl and ask that God would take her through the uncertain days that are ahead. And then her sister was born another, how many months later? 17, uh, 19, 19, 19 months. And so we have two granddaughters. And you know, we just don't know about the certain days that are ahead, but we do know that Jesus is alive and well mm -hmm. and he is there to look after them as they commit their lives to him. And we're fortunate that both of them are raised by mom and dad, go to Sunday school and go to church. And, and uh, they even have had their own worship services with their guitars and so on. Good to see them. Well, our benediction for today, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think. According to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Well, may God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless.